Hello, my name is Wylam, and in today's vlog we're going to be looking at the new Sky Hero OB-1. This is the 5 inch frame that we just got in. Uh, it looks to be a fairly interesting frame. I've already uh, talked to Brian Morse about this frame, so we're going to go ahead, open it up, see what's inside, build it, and give you my quick opinions on it. So let's go ahead and open it up. It comes in a Ziploc bag, very sturdy. On the back, you can apparently register this frame, which is kind of new. I haven't really seen that before. So let's see what's inside of here. Plenty of stuff. So the big bag, we have the two arms. You'll notice that uh, the front arm and the back arm are actually different. So there's actually uh, a front piece that you can get and a back piece you can get. You can't just have a uh, buy one piece that will fit for the front and the back. Various parts. This looks like uh, uh, the things that you'll need to build the top plate and maybe also to connect these two pieces together. So more carbon fiber. Quick instructional booklet on what kind of screws to use to put together the frame. Bag full of screws, let's see. Ouch. Staples. Uh, we have M3 by 14s. Those are the long screws. M3 by 4s, really short. M3 by 12s. So we got 14s and then 12s. A whole bunch of M3 by 10. Uh, the 10 means 10 millimeter and M3 by 6 so plenty of screws to use so we'll get a chance to see what they're used for here are the two spacers why is there only two I would expect four but here are the two spacers for the front of the frame I would assume uh, the skid pads uh, look to be pretty well made, uh, feels pretty light. Uh, nylon standoffs, so this is for the uh, power distribution board and the flight controller. Uh, more long screws with uh, hex nuts, these are probably used uh, to hold the frame together, you can see it right here, so interesting. And this looks like the con the piece that will hold your XT60 uh, connector in the back. So this is uh, something that's really nice, is that uh, I always enjoy having frames that come with an instruction booklet so that you know exactly what screws to use and how things are put together. So very nice that uh, they incorporated that into the uh, pamphlet uh, that comes with the bag. So this looks to be uh, fairly detailed. So the next part we're going to go ahead and slowly put together and uh, give you our opinions on it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the base plate of the frame, which is going to involve a few parts. Uh, thanks to the instruction booklet, it's fairly easy to understand. Uh, as always, uh, when you open up car carbon fiber stuff, you really do want to get a, just a damp towel and just go ahead and clean off each part and get all the carbon fiber dust off. That way you, you don't get it all over your hands and you're not breathing it in. So what we did is we took the very bottom part. Uh, we took these long, I don't know, carbon fiber pieces and we put them on top of the bottom base plate. We're using the M, uh, the M3 12 millimeter screws and that represents the center bottom plate that's going to uh, support these arms from the bottom. So this right here is the front uh, two arms and this right here is the back two arms. So once you have this situated uh, like you see in front of you, you can go ahead and seat the back two arms into the screws and then the front two arms into the screws. These four screws, by the way, are what's your power distribution, power distribution board and flight controller are going to go on. And then this is the top of the, of the base plate that will sandwich everything together. So. So there we go. 
So it would look something like this in order to build up your base plate. These are four mil arms and we have a top carbon fiber piece that's probably, I would say maybe two mils, one and a half, two mils. And then uh, the long pieces are another two mils and then we have a very thin bottom piece. So the uh, overall thickness of the bottom base plate is actually quite, uh, it's quite lengthy. And I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be very strong. Now, the power distribution board would go right here. So in the instruction booklet, uh, it actually shows us using some uh, nylon, uh, very thin nylon nuts. Uh, we couldn't find these, so I'm assuming that uh, we have to provide these. Uh, the nylon nuts that we're looking at uh, are these right here. So if you can zoom in on that. I'm assuming that these are the nylon nuts that we're supposed to be using and then you can easily get this from a, a nylon set and that will uh, let you put on the uh, power distribution board. But we don't really, uh, we're not gonna use these. We're gonna go ahead and use these instead. These are uh, nylon washers that uh, you can almost get in any hardware store. So we'll go ahead and open it up and then we'll put in the four on top of this and four and then we can put on the power distribution board that's not provided by the way but there's the power distribution board and then we can use the nylon uh, nuts that are provided these are the longer ones which will give you a little space in between your power distribution board and your flight controller so we can go ahead and open this up and then we can screw it in And that is what the base plate uh, looks like. As you can tell, that uh, there's actually quite a bit of uh, height to the base plate, but uh, it should be a fairly strong design. So before we move on, uh, a few things that we learned while building the uh, top plate and also the camera mount was that uh, I told you wrong. This is actually the front of the quad and this is the back of the quad. So we actually took the power distribution board out and flipped it around so that the XT60 connector piece would face uh, the back of the quad. So if I was looking at it, this will now be the back and this will be the front. Uh, a few interesting things that uh, I was thinking about when we were putting this together is if you wanted to use all of the carbon fiber pieces, I would most likely um, change out the M3 12 millimeters and I would probably move up to a 14 or maybe even a 16 to gain uh, a little bit more threading on the, uh, on the actually the nylon screw. If you look right here, it's just poking out just a little bit. I would probably want a little bit more threading uh, on my nylon nuts. So I would probably move up to like a, um, a 14 millimeter length screw. That's just me though, but uh, this will probably work fine as that should not be too much of a stress point. Also, if you take a look at the bottom of this particular uh, base plate is that you can probably, if you wanted to save a little weight, remove this and then just have those two uh, lengthy legs uh, at the bottom if you wanted to do that. This uh, looks, gives you a nice flat surface and will protect those two legs, so it might be well worth it. Uh, we're gonna keep it like this, but just some interesting things to look at. The top plate and the camera mount is actually fairly simple to put together, but uh, it just takes you a little bit uh, because it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle in which you actually have to get everything in just properly. One interesting thing to note, and it's gonna be difficult to see, but the, um, the little hole in which the HS1177 seats into, this is actually chamfered on uh, one side on both of these so that when you have the camera, it'll actually seat into uh, the actual carbon fiber uh, side plate, which is kind of nice. Uh, so each side will have a chamfer and on the other side, it'll just be a flat surface. So that's pretty cool that uh, there's a little attention to detail right here. And I'm assuming these holes uh, are, is a way to actually tell you what your angle of your camera is. So you can actually look through to see at what, uh, what degree uh, your camera tilt is. Uh, I believe that's what it is. And if it is, that's pretty cool because that way you can adjust it easily, but you can also adjust it to the exact spot every single time if you needed to. 
So uh, to put this together, you'll need four pieces. Uh, so I would recommend the two side pieces and then the back piece. That seems to be the easiest way to put it together, at least from initial look. So you'll take the back piece and what you want to do is you want to, uh, this is a notch right here. What you want to do is you want to push that into the notch first before pushing it in uh, to the front notch. And that will secure one side. Just rinse and repeat on the other side. At this point, you would probably want to put your uh, HS 1177 camera on or any compatible size uh, camera mount, but it looks like these. Uh, this is purpose built for this particular camera or form factor if you want to look at it. So very popular camera, so uh, not surprising that uh, they use uh, that form factor. And then this piece right here will actually fit uh, in from the bottom and then you push it up top and this one is a little bit weird because you actually have to go up at an angle and then push up when you get to the uh, get to the front and it's a little hard to show on camera but once you have it all together it actually stays together fairly well without any screws so kind of an interesting uh, way to put together the side plates and the top plate well, I, I guess most frames don't actually have side plates, so this is one of the few that actually have carbon fiber side plates. And then it will seat in something like this. So we're almost done building the frame. Uh, we'll go ahead and put on the top plate and the side plate in the next part. In order to install the top plate and the side plates onto the OB-1, uh, we went ahead and installed the two front spacers and then there is actually a back spacer block. It's actually not the traditional spacers that we're looking for, which is pretty interesting. Uh, on the bottom, the M312s are used for the front and then the M310s were used in the back. As you can see in the back, it's actually seated into the arms. It's not actually seated into the side plate or uh, the arms underneath the, uh, the bottom side plate. So pretty interesting that uh, it seats directly to this arm. Also, uh, this particular block back here, um, most of the time what we see is this is made out of uh, either plastic or 3D printed materials, whichever one you uh, want to think of. But this is actually made of aluminum. So a uh, pretty high quality piece in order to uh, uh, put in the back, which is kind of nice. This is where I believe your XT60 would go. So you can stick your XT60 in here and just run a short wire to the power distribution board. And this looks like the place where your VT, uh, your antenna for your VTX will come out. So uh, very well thought out in terms of trying to help you organize in making your wires as short as possible. So once you have these two installed, uh, you can go ahead and line up the top and side plates to your particular frame. So for this one, if I can do it right, we'll see it like this. So what you'll see is that uh, the screw holes will be uh, on the front of the, uh, of the top plate. And then in the back, what you see is that this will match up very nicely with your side plates. So uh, very, very well uh, done in terms of precision and uh, looks to be a very nice frame overall. So we'll go ahead and uh, screw on these two uh, or these four screws to complete the frame and then we'll give you our final thoughts. So we went ahead and put on the top and side plates. Uh, to do that, you will need to use the M3 six millimeter screws. So there is one, two for the front, so only two for the front, but there's actually four in the back. You'll have two on the insides, and uh, these were particularly stubborn, so you'll definitely have to uh, finagle and work with them in order to get them in. At least it was for our frames, but you were, we were able to get them in. And then there's actually two on the sides, so they really wanted to make sure that the, uh, the back of this frame uh, for the for the top and side plates really stay in place. So there's a lot of uh, definitely a lot of strength back here uh, to go to this aluminum uh, H style block back here. So definitely a lot of strength here. And then in the front, we just have a small piece uh, holding it together for the uh, for the camera mount, which is going to be go uh, right up here. So uh, overall, fairly interesting frame and uh, really neat to, uh, to put together. Definitely one that uh, I think has a, 
you know it's worthwhile to build and worthwhile to get if you're interested in uh, different types of racing frames uh, if you look at the front uh, just to let you see you will notice that this is not one of the true X frames so uh, just to give you a definition of a true X and everybody's a little bit different but uh, I my definition would be is that if you were to measure from this uh, motor mount to this motor mount this motor mount to this motor mount where it crosses over in the center is generally where the flight controller is centered so as you can tell this isn't exactly going to center on the flight controller board and also you'll notice that the uh, the spacing between the front and the back is different than from the sides so this is more considered uh, an H frame in which it's longer on the sides than it is on the sides and uh, if you want to hear the theory behind that um, go ahead and uh, listen to the podcast with Brian Morris he actually went over why he preferred this type of style uh, there's definitely benefits to it it'll require a different tune than uh, going with a true X but there are different benefits and you know he's He's been racing for a while, so I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. So we've completed building out this frame. So uh, one thing that we want to look at is all of the leftover screws and parts. And this is one of the interesting things about this frame is that you can build it in different ways in which you can use uh, very few of the carbon fiber parts to make it lighter. So if you want to do that, you would use other uh, screw bits than the ones dictated by the manual. Uh, the one in the manual gives you the full build, but if you want something that's lighter uh, than the full build, you're definitely able to do that. You're definitely able to remove parts to make it lighter. So uh, over here, we also have the skid plates, which you can use with the M3 10 millimeter frames. But if you don't want to use the skid plates, uh, the likelihood is that you're going to have to use a smaller uh, length screw. And I think that's where the M3 six millimeters come in. So if you want to use the skid plates, add a little extra weight, add some more protection to your frame, then by all means use that. Uh, there's some few extra screws in the uh, M3 four millimeters and the 14s. This most likely is uh, if you want to build a super lightweight frame in which you don't want to use a lot of the carbon fiber and aluminum pieces, in which case you will need a uh, aluminum hex nut to sandwich uh, these pieces together. So uh, again, different ways to build it. Uh, very interesting if you want to go with a lightweight build because you're going to have to put a little thought into how you want to build that. But uh, overall, really cool frame, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, us going over the frame and its contents. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, this particular frame we're actually going to be giving away. We're going to be giving it away on the FPV podcast. So if you are a listener, definitely uh, watch out for that in the near future. We're going to be doing some few uh, giveaways on there. So if you're interested in this frame, definitely... Uh, Pay attention to the FPV podcast and uh, you'll have a chance to win this frame right here.